In today's demo, we're going to talk about Docker and managing a container platform made up of both Linux and Windows nodes. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Docker allows you to package an application with all of its dependencies into a single container image that runs in its own isolated environment. Think of it kind of like a virtual machine, but without the overhead of a guest operating system or hypervisor. For this demo, we'll be looking at two products that were recently released. First of all, Docker released their Swarm utility. Now, Swarm allows you to cluster multiple Docker engines and then deploy applications across them from a single common API. Swarm can manage environments that span on-site, public cloud, as well as hybrid of the two. Now, traditionally, Docker has been limited to use on Linux-based operating systems, as they relied heavily on features present in the Linux kernel. However, with the release of Windows Server 2016 TP4, Microsoft introduced both native and Hyper-V containers, um, allowing containerized applications to run natively on Windows. So running here, we can see a Docker swarm composed of both a Linux node and a Windows node. Currently, these two nodes are sitting on a virtual machine on my laptop, but could easily be in different data centers or across any number of cloud providers. Now, here we can see that currently the only containers running on our cluster are spread across two different nodes, one of which is our Swarm master in our Linux machine, and one of which is a Windows uh, 2016 TP4 machine. Both are running the Swarm agent, and the Linux machine is operating as the Swarm master. So today we're going to try and launch an application that will span both of these nodes and, and across both operating systems uh, and see if we can get it working. So first we're going to launch a Postgres container. For this, we're just going to use the standard Postgres image that you can get off Docker Hub. We're going to pass to it that it should expose port 5432, which is the standard Postgres port, as well as go ahead and seed it with a sample password. Now, normally in a production environment, you'd figure out a, a, a more secure way to pass in this, uh, this password, but for demo purposes, this works just fine. The third thing we're going to tell it is we want this Postgres instance to run on uh, one of our nodes that has the label OS equals Linux, as opposed to OS equals Windows. We'll go ahead and hit enter to start that. And if we do a Docker PS, we can see that our image is now running on our Swarm master node. Next, we've got a quick little helper script that's going to go ahead and build our DB schema for us. Um, again, we want that to run on one of our Linux nodes, and it's just going to exit when it's done. So very short running process there. So now let's try and launch something on our Windows node. Here we're going to launch, launch MongoDB, and again, we're going to tell it which ports to go ahead and forward. And we are going to specify that this one should run on our Windows node. Go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to take just a second to spin up. And then if we do a Docker PS, we can see that now our Postgres instance is running on our Linux machine, and our Mongo instance is running on our Windows machine. Now let's hop over to our Windows server, and we can see again here that our MongoDB instance was started just 24 seconds ago um, here on our Windows machine. Let's go ahead and start up the rest of the services. So this is just going to be some miscellaneous helper services that we're going to go ahead and launch. And then finally, we'll start up our web front end that will actually provide the REST API. Um, this one's going to take a second. It, it, it's going out and fetching a list of, of information about some of our IPs, which this particular REST API service uh, will return to another part of our application. Okay, looks like that launched correctly. And we will now launch. So I've got a sample web request to our REST API. Here, I'll copy and paste. And we'll see that we returned properly what we expect, this JSON. We can now go ahead and get some more information on this. And we're going to look up some information about that source 452. And we actually found out that, okay, this particular IP that we checked belongs to Amazon AWS. Now, let's imagine that we have a new app that runs on Microsoft IIS web server. We can launch that app right alongside our other app within the cluster. 
go ahead and paste in this command. And that'll go ahead and start IIS on our machine running Windows. So if we come over here now, we can again see that we have IIS running on our Windows server. Let's go ahead and go to And there's the IIS server we just launched. So that's pretty much it for this demo. Now today we launched Docker Swarm of nodes with mixed operating systems, then delegated work to those nodes uh, using our, our defined labels that we went ahead and defined. Now next time we're going to go ahead and take a look at Docker Compose, which can go through and automate a lot of that work that we did um, to, to launch our service as well as be used in continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. Uh, after that we're going to go ahead and take a look at Docker's new beta web-based UI, uh, Docker Universal Control Pane, which allows us to do a lot of this work from a, a web UI for, for those that prefer to click around on a, on a GUI instead of in the command line.